Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about addition reactions. This is going to be more of an introductory video. Also before I get into the actual content please make sure to leave a like, comment, save and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content and find it helpful. I love hearing your guys' feedback so please feel free to DM me whenever. So what is an addition reaction? Well, think addition means to add something. What are we adding? Well, we are going to be adding two groups, could be two different groups or two of the same group, to a double bond where each carbon, let's label the carbons a part of the initial double bond, blue and green, will both have one group added to them. So in this case, X has added to the blue carbon and Y has added to the green carbon. So in the product, we now do not have a double bond. So the double bond can be referred to as destroyed. And X and Y, these arbitrary groups, have been added to the carbons that were initially a part of the double bond. In this course, you are going to be expected to do a few things when it comes to addition reactions. You are going to have to learn how to predict the products of an addition reaction, as well as propose the mechanism of an addition reaction. But you can think of these two things as bestest friends, because if you can propose a mechanism for a specific reaction, well, the mechanism is going to lead you to predicting the products. So these two things are best as friends and they go hand in hand. If you can propose the mechanism, you can also predict the products. I mean, if you propose the right mechanism, you will then predict the correct products. I guess this goes the opposite way too. If you propose the wrong mechanism, you will predict the wrong products. So let's learn how to propose the right mechanism. And finally, this is when we go from being just a follower to a creator, creator of chemistry, which is when we are going to propose a synthetic route to synthesize alkenes. But I probably won't be discussing that in this video. That will probably be a later video. So let's go over the first situation that you are going to encounter with addition reactions. This is when you are going to be adding two different groups across an unsymmetrical alkene. So unsymmetrical alkene, what does that mean? Well, what's an alkene? An alkene is a double bond where there's two carbons that make up that double bond. Currently, the pink carbon is attached to two hydrogens and the green carbon is attached to two hydrogens. Right now, since both the pink and the green carbon have the exact same groups attached to them, this is considered a symmetrical alkene. So this would be a symmetrical as soon as I replace one of these hydrogen groups with a group that is not hydrogen, well, then we get an unsymmetrical alkene. So let's say I made that one green hydrogen a CH3 group. Well, now this is no longer symmetrical. This is unsymmetrical because the left-hand side is different than the right-hand side. We can see in this example that if we compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side, let's label the left-hand side carbon a part of the double bond pink and the carbon on the right hand side blue on the left hand side the carbon is attached to an H well because every carbon has to make four bonds so right now since this carbon only has three bonds two Sigma and one pi bond well it needs a fourth bond and all bonds that are not drawn in we assume them to be hydrogen so I can just draw in a hydrogen so the pink carbon is attached to a hydrogen and a CH3 group whereas the blue carbon is attached to two CH3 groups therefore this is unsymmetrical. For this to be symmetrical, we would have to erase the pink hydrogen and replace it with a CH3 group, but that is not the case. So this is unsymmetrical. Let's get right into going over the mechanism. So I want you to consider a double bond to be some reactive species, okay? Consider it to be a nucleophile. If this pi bond comes across something that is, for example, delta plus or positively charged, it's going to behave just like a nucleophile does. It can go two out and attack that delta positive thing. And what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get one of those carbons, a part of the initial double bond, attacking that electrophilic thing. Let's call it E. Well, that means the other carbon that ended up not attacking that electrophilic thing would 
go into an electron deficit and become cationic. Well, that leaves it able to be attacked by something else. For example, another nucleophile or nucleophilic thing. And then that nucleophilic thing can go two in. And then what do we get? Well, we got two things that ended up adding to a double bond where the double bond was removed and both of the initial carbons had some other group added to them. Here it was an electrophile, some delta plus or positively charged thing, and a nucleophile. So let's do the exact same thing for the example that I have given here. So we have a double bond. Let's highlight the two electrons in that pi bond and say you're going to behave like a nucleophile. Nucleophiles are nucleophilic, meaning that they are nucleus loving, so they are delta minus or negatively charged. We're going to say this pi bond is going to be delta minus, so it's nucleophilic, if it is tempted with something that is delta plus. So try to identify on the other substrate something that is delta plus. For example, this hydrogen is delta plus because it is attached to an electronegative bromine group that is sucking electrons away from it, causing that H to be in an electron deficit. So this pi bond can go ah, two in and attack that hydrogen. But since there are two carbons that make up the initial pi bond, let's arbitrarily label these two carbons. Consider the carbon on the left-hand side to be C1 and the one on the right-hand side to be C2. If the double bond flicks out and grabs that hydrogen from carbon number one, so let's say it grabs from carbon number one, Carbon number two is going to lose an electron and become cationic. So carbon number two, if carbon number one grabs that hydrogen, is going to be cationic. But we also have the case where C2 grabs that hydrogen and C1 would be left in a cationic state. So now we have to decide, well, which intermediate are we going to proceed forward with? You're going to choose the more stable carbocation where stability of a carbocation is one prime is less stable than two prime, which is less stable than three prime. Where we are referring to how many other alkyl groups that that cationic carbon is attached to. So this carbocation would be three prime and this guy would be two prime. So we would proceed forward with this intermediate because it has a more stable carbocation. So if this structure is our intermediate, what happens next? Well, consider the initial 2-in arrow from the pi bond. Every 2-in is reciprocated with a 2-out. So that means after the pi bond flicked out and attacked that hydrogen, initially attached to the bromine, we also got a Br- minus in the process of doing so. So since opposites attract, the Br- minus will see this cationic carbon and go two in and attack it. So what do we get? Well, we get the bromine attached to carbon number two, Br. And there we have it, the product of our addition reaction of two different groups where the two different groups were H and Br across an unsymmetrical alkene. The summary is that when two different groups add across an unsymmetrical alkene via what we are going to refer to as a Markovnikov reaction, which is just regular conditions, the bromine is going to add to the more substituted carbon, so this carbon, and the hydrogen is going to add to the less substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond, where substitution is referring to substitution to other alkyl groups. Let's do another example. What if I asked you to add two of the same group across an unsymmetrical double bond? Well, it wouldn't really matter which carbon you added, the first Br2 versus the second Br, because consider the carbon on the left-hand side of the double bond to be a pink carbon, and the carbon on the right-hand side of the initial double bond to be a blue carbon. And let's label one of the Brs in pink, and one of the BRs in green. Let's say case one, if we arbitrarily label these two carbons, C1 and C2, let's say BR pink added to C1, and BR in green added to C2, we would get this, BR and BR. 
But case number two would be, let's say, the green bromine added to the pink carbon, C1, and the pink bromine added to the blue carbon, C2. We would get this. And we can see that these are the, the exact same product because bromine is equal to bromine. Therefore, it does not matter. When you have an unsymmetrical alkene and you add two of the same group across that double bond, all you have to do is eliminate that double bond in your product and add that group to each of those initial carbons, a part of the initial double bond. So all we did was eliminate the double bond and add a bromine to each of the carbons, a part of that initial double bond. That is it. That is all. What if I asked you to add two different groups across a symmetrical alkene? This is another case we could encounter. Well, once again, it will not matter. If we add the hydrogen to the pink carbon and the bromine to the green carbon, eliminating the double bond, adding the H to the pink and the bromine to the green, we get this. But if we do the opposite and add the bromine to the pink carbon and the hydrogen to the green carbon, we get this. But these are the exact same product. So once again, if you have two different groups adding across a symmetrical alkene, it also does not matter what carbon you add each of the groups to. We can also prove this to be true via the mechanism. So consider the double bond and consider HBr. If we take this double bond to be our nucleophile, highlighting the two electrons in the pi bond, where the nucleophilic pi bond goes two in, two out. Let's say it attacks the hydrogen from the green carbon. That will leave the pink carbon in a cationic state and electron deficit. We have a three prime carbocation. But let's say we have the opposite case. Let's say the hydrogen is grabbed by the pink carbon. That would leave the green carbon in an electron deficit, hence it would be cationic. What kind of carbocation is this? Well, this is also a three prime carbocation. So we get the exact same intermediate. So we have proved that once again, it does not matter which carbon the hydrogen is grabbed from because we are going to get the exact same intermediate, hence we're going to get the same product when we have two different groups adding across a symmetrical alkene. So going back to question number one, where we talked about adding two different groups across an unsymmetrical alkene, we had to consider, well, the regiochemistry. Where is the reaction going to occur? Is carbon number one, the pink carbon, going to grab the hydrogen? Or is the green carbon, carbon number two, going to grab the hydrogen? A part of HBr. And we found out that if we proceed via regular conditions, we're going to call this the Markovnikov. The intermediate state is going to leave the more stable carbocation, so the more substituted carbon, in an electron deficit. And the hydrogen will be snatched by the less substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond. And then bromine is going to come in and attack that carbocation. And in our final product, the bromine will end up attached to the more substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond, and the hydrogen will end up being added to the less substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond. If we have the anti-Markovnikov, take the exact same product, but the bromine will go on the less substituted carbon, and the hydrogen will go on the more substituted carbon if we have an unsymmetrical alkene. That is it, that is literally all. So let's do some examples. Consider this structure. We have a double bond. We have a pink carbon and a blue carbon. The blue carbon is the less substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond, and the pink carbon is more substituted with alkyl groups. So considering the anti-Markovnikov with HCl, that means the chlorine is going to be added to the less substituted carbon, so the blue carbon. So drawing out our original structure without that double bond, the chlorine is going to be added to the less substituted carbon, and the hydrogen is going to be added to the more substituted carbon. 
Whereas with the regular Markovnikov edition of HCl, where we are getting the intermediate state with the more stable positive carbocation, the hydrogen will be added to the less substituted initial carbon, a part of the initial double bond, and the chlorine will be added to the more substituted carbon, the pink carbon. We get the same situation with HBr. So let's say you have HBr added in the Markovnikov addition. These are regular conditions. That means we're going to proceed via the more stable carbocation intermediate. Therefore, the blue carbon is going to grab the hydrogen. And then the bromine will be added to the more substituted carbon, the pink carbon. And finally, the anti-Markovnikov of HBr. Well, it's going to be the exact same product of the HCl, anti-Markovnikov, except for it is not a chlorine. It is going to be a bromine group. So instead of the chlorine, you have a bromine group on the less substituted carbon, a part of the initial double bond. And the hydrogen will be attached to the more substituted carbon. That is it. That is all. I hope this video helped clear up some initial concerns with addition reactions. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and I hope you have a great night, and I hope this video was helpful. And yeah, once again, let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content and find it helpful. And have a great night. Love y'all!